Hello and welcome back to My View from the Piano Bench. We do this every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. here on my Joel Holtz Notes YouTube channel. In addition to Piano for My Friends every Thursday evening. Thank you very much to those of you who support and encourage me via the links available on the support page of my website. You'll see a link to that in the video description and look around while you're there. Poke around different pages on the website. Lots going on. Lots going on. All right. Topic for today. Learning what works. And now my mind wants to like augment the title. Say learning what works, living what works. But I think we'll just stick to learning what works. So for me, I've learned to be able to generalize what I'm able to uh, discover and learn at the piano and by playing music and pretty much apply it everywhere. I may never write that book that I've threatened entitled Everything I've Ever Needed to Know in Life I Learned at the Piano, uh, but doesn't make it any less true. Uh, we all are our own unique person or we all are our own normal and to live in that normal is to live our most effective life and our most productive life and the life that will impact people around us because we are being and working within our own unique selves so in music teaching my emphasis and this is not universal among teachers, uh, is to find the student's personal expression, to learn their temperament, to learn how they process music, and build on those personality strengths. While you continue to build foundations around the weak places too, but like know who you are and work within who you are. Uh, I remember a uh, discussion on Facebook with another a musician talking about a very different approach that if somebody comes to him as a pianist to, to learn jazz, that's a specific curriculum, so to speak. And if they're just like wanting to learn to improvise or learning, you know, how to do things with other kinds of music or how to play their pop tunes better or be a better singer songwriter, don't take his jazz lessons because it's a very specific agenda. And it's basically like, you know, just putting this in square peg round hole could be the case, you know, and that's a lot of what academic things are. Uh, but for me, it, it's, it's all about, you know, what handles are in the suitcase, what attaches itself within us. And we all have our places and we all have our ways. So for me, the emphasis is on the student finding their own voice and we all have one or our own niche you could say uh, so i will say learn about yourself for me for the last dozen or so years i've learned a lot
Learning the Blues, which is not exactly what I'm talking about, but it kind of works, right? I like that tune. It's one of those tunes that I forget I know, and then it dawns on me, it's like, oh, I should be playing that tune. Nice, fun Sinatra tune. So earlier today, I had a meeting with uh, Matt Milnick, the director of the Mainstay, the current director. He's been there for about a year, close to a year. And it's enough time for him to get a handle on things in this most unique venue. Uh, and if you haven't experienced the Mainstay, perhaps you're nowhere near it geographically. Uh, if you ever get the opportunity to travel to the Eastern Shore of Maryland, it's really worth a visit. It's a very unique and wonderful intimate space performance venue. Capacity is about 120 people. There is an outdoor stage now that can hold more, but uh, typically 120 is still going to be uh, the, the cap. And for anybody coming in from the outside, because Matt came from upstate New York, uh, it's a learning curve. This area is very unique. Uh, culture here. Uh, it's wonderful, uh, but it's not what you expect and it's not kind of the the norm. Uh, but it's a great arts community and you know Matt is really learning the ropes. Uh, and he's also kind of starting to figure me out, <laughs> which is not something that's going to happen right away. For anybody, I don't think. And for some people, it just never happens. Uh, but you know, Matt was the guy for the job. And when, when he came, he booked me for the First Friday series. From first Friday with Joe Holt. If you follow me on social media, you'll see those shows. Now once a month at the Mainstay. Uh, based pretty much upon what people were telling him. I was going to say everyone. But what people were telling him about Mainstay Mondays. And Mainstay Mondays, and I feel completely confident in saying this, and I don't mean it in an arrogant way at all, and I hope it doesn't come out that way. Mainstay Mondays was a really unique show, a series of shows. And it came about organically. It came about because of organic circumstances. And the director at the time's observation of what I do, how I interact with people, how much I'm supported in the community. It's a very unique set of circumstances. And that Mainstay Monday was about a collaborative performance every week uh, with a guest artist. And it would always, always change up. And uh, there were some attempts along the way to like just take that idea and genericize it. And I don't think you can. Uh, I don't think it's a template that you can build something on. And this is the part where I might sound a little arrogant, and I hope not. But I don't mean that because of me. I mean it because of the organic nature of the thing. Now, you can, I mean, it is kind of a template in the very broad sense. But to, to just say you're going to stick some money in this position and this is going to happen and, and, that's all you need to do, no, uh, not at all. So he was trying to figure the whole, the whole thing out. And he would watch, or had watched, YouTube videos of some of the other shows. And he's like, you know, he was intrigued. And uh, I've had the opportunity to build a really good rapport with Matt over the uh, more than half a year now that I have presented shows that, that he's been there to watch. And uh, today, in the meeting answered the question uh, of my one year mainstay, I mean, not mainstay Monday, first Friday contract, you know, we go on and we are, you know, we're, we're extending it essentially. And so I can make the announcement here for the first time that first Friday is at the mainstay, which may not start till March next year after we're done in December this year. Um, that's not clear yet. This year we started in February. But that series is going to continue. And that series, uh, yeah, that series, okay, I, I'm reading what I wrote to say, and I pretty much kind of ad-libbed about a paragraph here. 
but I'm going to read the, the, the last part here. So, Matt offered me first Fridays on the strength of what he was told about Mainstay Mondays. And now after seeing a half a dozen or more shows, he's getting the uniqueness of this niche built around my own uniqueness. And that's really the point. And also what I've learned along the way. And when I say uniqueness, it's because I've discovered those things about myself and I have built my path on them. And that's really just a general exhortation I want to give you uh, for whatever you do, especially if you're in some kind of cookie cutter situation. You've got your own cookie going on here. Uh, and it's really how you're going to make your statement or your actions or your contribution profound by really just being in that that special place that you are. So, again, this is where I told myself to make the announcement that we are extending First Fridays into 2023. So it prompted me to go back and look at the shows we've done this year. Uh, and it's kind of a continuation of Mainstay Monday that I did for four years of pretty much every Monday night. Uh, and that is to have a variety of things. I'm not pushing myself as hard to like, you know, what, what am I going to do that I've never done before and do it every week? You know, uh, because I just, I can't, I have so much else going on, but I think I've gotten to a zone of, a, of an ebb and flow to have a variety of shows. So let's see, let's see what you think. But let me say first, if you're not aware of the mainstay or mainstay, uh, shows. I was going to say Mainstay Mondays. I'm still stuck there. Starting at the end of last year, the Mainstay began live streaming all their shows and they archived them on the Mainstay Live Streams YouTube channel. So I'd encourage you to take a look. And all the shows I'm going to reference are actually available to watch. Uh, and the initial show was in February, which I called In Love With Swings. Something I'm doing different this year, which is I'm titling the shows. I'm giving them themes. Uh, as opposed to making them just about a single guest artist and whatever that guest artist does because I have a somewhat bigger budget and I don't have to have just one person. So I had two people, two friends, Amy Shook, Cody Level, and it was a, a no-maintenance show for me. It was walking in and playing, you know, swing era tunes with two musicians that are really steeped in love with that as I am. And that happened to also be Matt's first show of his booking tenure. He came at the, you know, toward the end of last year. And so he was responsible for making the bookings for 2023. So, you know, I was aware that it was, it was an important show. It was like the beginning of a new chapter, a new era for the mainstay. And uh, the history of the mainstay is, it's a history rich in, not exclusive in, but, but rich in the swing era of jazz.
but ain't got that swing. Well, yeah, we'll leave it right there. Uh, so that was a nice, safe way to come in. Uh, and a little backstory that uh, some of you know. Uh, the way things were going at the mainstay, and the hire that was initially made uh, to uh, for the director position was one that was already on the table that my series was over. And I had months to, to you know, embrace that, and that was fine. So I didn't expect uh, to be able to continue, but it was great. And so I guess I purposely came in easy for myself, but that only lasted one month because in March I did a ridiculous thing. And if you haven't seen that show with Stephanie Lamott, who was a wonderful classical pianist in this local area. Uh, that's, look at the live stream's YouTube channel, but that one's in two parts because we had a power outage at intermission. So the first half pre-intermission is the second video you'll see because that one was uploaded or posted first. And the second, the, the, the more recent video you see is the second set. So watch them in reverse order. Right, uh, because it's we created this theme about you know how a improvising pianist who can't keep anything straight, and how a wonderful, amazing sight reading classical pianist, you know, where is the common ground? How can they collaborate? We weave this whole thing. It was an intensive rehearsal process. It was, it was one of those, what I say, not in a complaining way, just in a descriptive way, high maintenance shows. Uh, but it was so worth it. It was, a, it was such a fun, memorable show. And Stephanie's much loved around here. So it was it was a given that we were going to have a full house. We were going to sell it out. And we did. Uh, and I kept telling Matt, we're going to sell this out. Are you sure? Yes, Matt, I'm sure. And we did. It was great. Uh, but I had to do a lot of straight reading. Uh, and when we talk about like finding who you are, that's not who I am. But we, we, we still try to build on all the things around us. You know, practice to your weaknesses, perform to your strengths, is the saying I often come back to. Uh, but I allowed some of our weaknesses to be on display, <laughs> which was fun. But uh, Stephanie also sort of came to my side of the street, too. Uh, and I think I'll just play a little classical theme that I improvised on, a very basic little theme. Let's see what happens right now, just for fun.
I just do? I did that for an ending? Oh, I'm sorry. See, there's an illustration of uh, how you might know what I'm playing before I do. Can I take that back? No, I'm still corny. Should I take it back again? Ah, forget it. <laughs> uh, but that was a fun show with, with Stephanie. If you have the chance to take a look at it, I think it, you, would, you would enjoy it. Now, I have to be ridiculous for just one second and stand up. Do I have to check something? Don't go away. I'm not going away. But I am always knocking things over. Sorry about that. I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to leave it like that. And hopefully I just didn't give you whiplash. My apologies. All right. So... With these shows, and if you go back over the history of the roughly 200 shows I did for Mainstay Mondays, it was it was the same thing. You want to try to change the subject each month. Although, really not as dramatically here, because uh, there was also a kind of a burnout thing. And the director and I talked about this today. Uh, kept that going for four years, and it pretty much ruled, ruled my life, you know, to put together these, these new shows that... That I had no connection to a lot of them every week. So anyway, in April this year, and then in May, I had vocalists that I could accompany. And that's what I love to do. I mean, I love all of it, but accompanying vocalists is just a, a, a real comfort zone and something these days especially I get to do a lot of, and it's great. Uh, Paula Johns came down from Philadelphia to do a, a tribute to African-American vocalists of the 20th century. And I titled the program Motown and War. And we, we did a, a whole, whole lot of stuff. And then in May, my uh, two good friends, Beth McDonald and Sharon Sable, came. Now, Sharon Sables, who I'm releasing the Blossom Theory Tribute Project with uh, very soon, we're actually kind of detouring from our timeline because we're going to bring a publicist in, and that's going to change the... Uh, the dynamic a little bit so we're still on track we're, we've just kind of like deepened the trench we're digging that we're putting so i don't even know what i'm trying to say but maybe you get it hopefully uh and so beth uh sharon came in representing blossom deary and uh beth came in representing peggy lee uh and and beth has a long history of Paying tribute to Peggy Lee. So we had a theme about what if Blossom Deary and Peggy Lee shared the stage. It was a really cool special show. I mean, all, all the shows are great. Uh, but that May show, it's it's a really just warm, wonderful vibe. And that was the first time that the two of them had collaborated on anything. And they're both really good friends of mine. It's really nice to just bring people together. So uh, what Sharon will uh, come back to all often is to point out that the song T for Two was the kind of catalyst to get Sharon thinking after we had performed it in the Mainstay Monday show when I had really just first met Sharon, thinking about approaching me to be the pianist for the Blossom Deary project. But I'm not going to play it like Blossom Deary does, which is kind of like Count Basie doing Little Darwin, which is just like as slow as it could be, but you'll hear it on our CD. I'm going to play it. I was going to say a normal T for two, but it looks normal. Or do I do it like this? Like that.
awesome Deary to T for two. job on that in the recording it was that was that's one of our favorite takes uh of the recording and we actually didn't do t for two in the mainstay show but that's still kind of representative of those two shows and accompanying vocalists and stuff so uh then we did an instrumental show after that that i call great american songbook jazz which is the history of the main uh of jazz the mainstay that's Kind of the, the the grounding of it historically and when the mainstay was founded like 25 ish years ago uh so i took advantage of having musical relationships and rapports with three different musicians who because of geography but more importantly because of what they do stylistically they'd never cross paths or would never cross paths uh a traditional jazz trumpet player danny tobias a bebop alto player sax player Vince Slardier and a, a Brazilian based uh, trombonist David Sachs from the DC area. This is from Wilmington. Danny's from uh, the the mythical non-existent central New Jersey, you know, <laughs> or the, or, around Trenton. And and you know, and all these shows that at least and, you know, talking to Matt about it that you know, when the idea of the, the, the show comes to me, I don't really know what's going to happen other than the foundation that it's on that I know is solid and I know that we can build something on. And so the idea of having these three guys who are going to hear things coming from the other musicians that they're with that they don't typically hear, just like jazz stylistic wise, and it's going to be really cool for them and everybody's going to kind of get into that experience because what musicians experience on the stage transfers to the audience and as I had envisioned it was it was a lovely show you know and the, the idea of the diverse approaches and the musicians appreciating the th stuff that was going on and especially when unannounced and I knew David was going to do it but the other two guys didn't he started scat singing that was the other guys smiled a lot it was it was quite fun uh, so I use the term Great American Songbook because that's integral in the history of the mainstay. But then the next month I called the show the next Great American Songbook. You know, going into the, 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 the substantive tunes of popular culture, uh, particularly in the 60s and 70s that, that, that followed. You know, the Beatles would certainly be uh, in there and James Taylor would be in there. Stevie Wonder would be in there. You know, where there's this this body of, you know, popular music that you can really sink your teeth into, uh, and that still has the relationship. And, and a lot of what happens in pop and rock music, especially today, but all the way through, is not really connected to the conventions of the Great American Songbook. It's the unique thing about our popular culture, post rock and roll. And I don't know if I've ever talked about you know what I would call the the, the uh, the Great Divide. Maybe I did a previous manifestation, previous life of the stream. Mm, I'm not really speaking very clearly, uh, but the uh, yeah, the culture of rock and roll is different than the culture of anything that came before. Right. But the point here is that there is a continuation of songs of substance. You know, when when you play an old tune like Stardust and you say they don't write them like that anymore. That's true, but there are also songs that happen, like the Billy Joel, Elton John, like I mentioned, the Beatles, and you can say about them, they don't write songs like that anymore. You know, I remember seeing uh, Paul McCartney, actually when Paul McCartney recorded a duet with Tony Bennett, you know, and uh, Paul McCartney gave uh, credit to his songwriting inspiration, Cole Porter. You know, and I have a... I have a uh, songwriter friend uh who's made some real significant pop music contributions and i asked him you know well, what's your grounding he said oh, cole porter <laughs> go for it man so uh so we had this this unique uh continuation 
uh, you know, Great American Song, probably makes Great American Song from two different eras. And I had Kelly Vale and Nick Bucci. They had, they had a great job. You know, everyone loved that show. You should watch that too. I'm, basically, I guess this video is a little, not commercial, but just an assignment for you to watch me say Monday show. First Friday shows, in case you missed them. It's later in the day that I should be recording, or should I say night? But it's when I could do it this time. So, last month, I had my old pals, the Madiri Brothers, Joe and Paul, and just had the little trio. And when we were really, uh, warming up, we were doing sound check. I started playing the tune Imagination. And, you know, Joe joined in. He said, you know, I've always loved that tune. I've never played it. But he seemed to do all right. So we played it in the show, and it was very, very nice. <laughs> So, I started this talking about learning about my own uniqueness, learning about myself, and being able to apply it. And it is, you know, coming from my own
desire to use the abilities I, I have in the best way possible that a series like that you know happens and there are certain strengths I have and certain you know weaknesses for sure but what specifically have I learned about myself and what I aim to do well step into moments uh, see the big picture feel my way there rather than think my way there and trust my intuition and that's for lack of a better word not a good word but a formula you know for me is that your formula your formula will be uniquely yours we all can learn from what other people discover and find but ultimately we need to discover it for ourselves uh, so as I said, I was saying to Matt, uh, when I would like decide who I could ask to be a guest artist, you know, what could we build shows on, especially for, for Mainstay Monday, you know, it's kind of built on me being able to see the big picture before I have any idea of, of what the details will be, which that is the opposite of most people. You know, most people it's going to be, you're like, you like, you, you know what it is you're going to do. And then you figure out how to get there. For me, it's like, I know what I'm going to build it on. Let's see what happens. And, and I learn quickly to be content with that. Uh, and not only be content with it, but, but to trust it. Uh, related to that Keith Jarrett quote, I always often come back to, that he says, when I sit at the piano, my hand knows what to do. And if I try to tell it what to do, I'm stopping it. Not only am I stopping it, I'm stopping it from doing something better than I could think of, right? And in a general way, that's my approach. It's like, I don't decide what something's going to be, but I do have a sense of what something can become. Now, I mean, sometimes I can envision exactly w what it is from the starting point, but other times all I can see is a starting point. Either way, uh, I, I've learned to trust that uh, to trust the foundation that, that I find. So for for one of the uh, Mainstay Monday shows that I ha had a particular musician, a uh, bass player na named Alex, and it was just bass and piano, uh, and, and Alex uh, performed in one of the Americana bands, or bluegrass perhaps, uh, that came through the Mainstay. And I just focused on him right away. And it's like, okay, I can connect with this guy. And I invited him to do a Mainstay Monday just based on that. Uh, but, but Mark Dykeman, my friend who, who came to that show, said, you know, he was kind of speculating to me, well, how did you know to invite Alex? What did you understand you, you, you could do? You, did you plan it out in your head and then you invited? It said, no, the opposite of that. And he was like, huh? You know, it's, it's like, I saw the foundation of what it could be built on. That's all I needed to know. And then for, for me to put these shows together, the closer we get to them, you know, then I can really just see what they're going to be. You know, and, 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 and again, it's like I say, it's not putting a jigsaw puzzle together. It's, you know, and looking at each piece is seeing the whole picture. You know, and then you can take it apart, but, but you know what it looks like. And that's kind of how it works for me. And back when I was uh heavily involved in the the music therapy realm for about about 10 years which i did as sort of a, an appendage to the rest of my performing and i had all these you know contracts that i would go into uh nursing homes and continuing care communities a lot of what i would do would be group programming that would be very just general uh and for those things, I would have themed pro, uh, shows, uh, themed little concerts. And it wouldn't be about the music. The music would support whatever the theme was. The theme could be like a story I'm telling about my kids, or it could be something about current events, or it could be something seasonal. And, and, and I remember kind of thinking as I was doing it, it's like, you know, this, is, this comes easy to me. It's kind of spike lunarisms. I, I mean, kind of like spoonerisms. You know, sometimes it's easier to awk and tunerisms than it is to norm talkily. 
I mean, sometimes it's easier for me to talk on spoonerisms than it is for me to talk normally. And it's interesting that it was not difficult for me to pull that off because I'm pretty tired right now. You can tell I'm having trouble speaking as it is. But when it's time to uh, spoonerize, well, I stopped myself from saying something. I'm not going to explain it. Uh, that's why I hesitated. But anyhow, stop, Joe. Right? Uh, looking over the landscape is, is, is my thing. And, and so when I was putting those programs together, I'm like, you know, this is actually really easy for me, easier than a lot of other things. And this is like probably unique to me. I mean, not unique like I'm the only one, but part of my uniqueness. Right? And, uh, yeah, it was a, that was a, it was a comfort zone to create and work within these themes. Uh, so, you've heard me say that I only have a wide angle lens and I've learned to embrace that. So now the question, what have you learned about yourself? And when you can like see your own uniqueness and you can embrace and apply it, it, uh, I can't read the word I wrote. This is terrible. Uh, it focuses and empowers you going forward. Yeah. Never write when you're in a hurry or tired and you can't read what you're writing. Embrace what it is that you do and embrace who you are. Always seek to grow and avoid, oh my goodness, avoid trying to be someone you're not. And how much time have I spent trying to define where I want to go forward by where I don't want to go the other way? You know, it's like, I don't want this. So that's going to be what I focus on, what I don't want. So th that means I'll do what I do want. Well, no, what do I want? What is it? Who am I? You know, so don't look behind. Look ahead. Focus forward. Yeah.
Ha! Well, again, my uniqueness. I got no strings, right? So I think what I'll do, just spontaneously, since I played that, that point, pointing me to the Pinocchio, I'll play uh, my dad's favorite song, or at least my dad's favorite vocalist, Jiminy Cricket, Cliff Edwards. But nobody knows that name, but everyone knows Jiminy Cricket. So hopefully this worked as, as uh, a description of First Fridays at the Mainstay. I didn't want to title this that. I wanted to it, it to be about some kind of conceptual thing. So embracing what works, which kind of fuels that, is that. So just so you know, my First Friday shows for the rest of the year, next weekend in September, a tribute to Billy Penberger, who was a wonderful and much-loved a singer songwriter musician in the Westchester Pennsylvania area not so well known down by the mainstay but one of our uh, uh, important people at the mainstay our piano tuner and a good friend of mine uh, was in Billy Berger's band and Billy had passed away suddenly a few years ago and uh, Steve Prentice is uh, excited to help put together a, a tribute to him and his wonderful music and we got a great band we got a great band we have a great band uh and we're gonna also do some really fun covers and stuff that i don't usually play you know which makes it fun uh so watch the live stream if you can't come to the show and then what am i doing in oh yeah in october a naval commodore's reunion three musician friends of mine who all uh, served in the in the navy and as musicians and were all part of that elite navy commodore's big band and for about a year the three of them overlapped they were all in there together and i know all three of them but 
two of them haven't seen the one for like 30 years. So they haven't all been together since they were together in the band. And it's going to be fun reuniting musicians playing jazz. And I've encouraged them to tell some stories on each other, which will be fun. Uh, and then in November, Holly Lane and Sure Jazz. Holly, uh, I had her three times for Mainstay Mondays because people just keep requesting her and they're still doing it. And Sure Jazz is the group I play with down in Rehoboth. Uh, but my budget for Mainstay Mondays didn't allow me to have Sure Jazz and Holly Lane at the same time. And now, now I can. And there'll be a lot of French themed music there as well. Holly has a history in that department. And then... I think I'm going to do a solo show in December and go, as I would say, unsupervised. Ha! So, there we go. Hope this was enjoyable to some extent or informative or, or kept you from falling asleep or maybe put you to sleep if you needed to sleep. Whatever. Thank you. See you tomorrow for piano for my friends.